it literally fills this tray right away up. Hi, hi, and welcome to the channel. Now today's video is back to the old iFi. Sorry, I've wandered off onto doing videos about videos and colorization, that kind of thing. But uh, to get the channel back on track, I thought I'd better get another iFi video on it. And uh, spaces are the premium at the moment, but I've had managed enough time to get these Gal 4 speakers set up. I haven't got them in front of me. I'm gonna show you a few pictures of them as we go along. But uh, if you have a look on the internet, you're gonna see what they look like anyway. Now these are a pair of speakers that come out in the 80s. These would have been a budget model by Gal, budget floor standing speakers. And um, these days you can pick them up on eBay for about 50 quid, somewhere like that. So if you're looking for a pair of floor standers, these may be ones you're looking at because they're quite cheap. And you, think, you know, may think they're gonna fit the bill kind of thing. So I'm gonna do a little review of them very, very shortly. Just want to go back to the size. These are not a massive floor standing pair of speakers, but if you put them up against a bookshelf, they look a lot bigger. So I've done a little bit of a comparison here, really. Uh, even though they're more than short 35 TIs or TI 35s, I'm going to compare them against a, a larger kind of bookshelf speaker. Uh, go on a stand, really more than a bookshelf, I should imagine. But the, the, that kind of uh, speaker. And if you put them up against each other, as the gal were taller, you're going to think straight away. You know, there's more volume. Uh, more space, you know, it's a bigger cabinet kind of thing in that gal, more room for the air to flow around, etc. Where in fact the uh, more than short or bigger, so it's a little bit uh, optical illusion kind of thing, I suppose. So if we just go with the dimensions of these gal, first of all, these are these are approximate, these are 19 centimeters width, height for 74, and a depth of 21. When you you know, times them figures to cubic centimeters, it comes to 29,526. So we're gonna call it 29 and a half thousand. Uh, if you go over to the uh, Mormon Schultz, so you measure 26 centimeters width, height for 49, and a depth for 26. And when you start multiplying them, they come out at 33,124. We call it 33,000. So they're at least 10% bigger. Even like I say, if you put them up against each other, you're probably gonna think that maybe there's more volume in the gals, but there isn't. There's actually more volume in the Mordant Shorts. Uh, I just thought I'd mention that anyway. Right, okay, these are rated about 100 watts, I think 120 watts, somewhere around there, 88 dB, and they're six ohms. As usual, we're gonna stick this on the bench and have a little look inside, and there you can see where the uh, driver's facing upwards. We're gonna take the uh, base driver out first, and it's a peerless SKO 130 driver, 13 centimeters. And we're gonna take the tweeter out, that's a Fever uh, D19, TD stroke 05 three quarter inch poly dome tweeter. Quite a, a nice tweeter, apparently. Get some good reviews that tweeter. And have a little look at the crossover. There's the crossover there. I think this is pretty much remained untouched. And there's the wadding we've got inside. Not a great deal of wadding because the size of the speaker, very minimum really, but uh, there's the wadding inside. And if you quick look at the back, these are bi wireable. And I did try them both ways. Uh, these are bi wireable, as you can see. And there's the uh, connections in the back for the bi wire. Now, if we look further down, down the bottom, there's a few specifications there, a little bit of uh, information, and it says, uh, fill these speakers up with sand to enhance your bass experience. So uh, you can fill these uh, these uh, cabinets up with some sand to enhance that bass. So we're gonna to come to that, because uh, I had a little bit of a surprise when I picked these up, I thought they was quite heavy. And the reason they was quite heavy is because they had some sand inside. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna run a few different amplifiers and receivers and a few different sources, CD, vinyl, etc., to get my general opinion of these speakers. So first of all, I left the sand in there because I thought this would enhance the sound. This is gonna give her a better sound. I don't forget, I, I, I run these speakers, uh, all, all the floors in my house are wooden, wooden floors. They've got a carpet in one room and I kind of took them in there as well, but basically it's, you know, I've got the, it's not a concrete floor even downstairs, it's a wooden floor, some joist kind of thing. So that's going to enhance a bit of base maybe to compare to your house. So I just thought I'd mention that and I, I tried these with and without the spikes as well. And when it comes to the spikes a bit later on, I had a bit of an accident with the spikes, but I'll tell you about that a bit later on in the video. Uh, caught me by surprise a little bit. But uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, I had to listen to them with the sand in. So don't forget, first uh, impressions is with the sand still in the speakers. Uh, and, and as soon as you turn them on, I'll show these bi, I've done these bi wire, should I say, and non bi wire by linking the two plates that uh, link up the bi wire at the back. And to be honest with you, I hardly noticed any difference. So for me to turn around and say there was a difference, 
I didn't notice it, you know, I mean, it's, if it's there, it's, it's very minimal. But don't forget the amplifiers, these, the amplifiers that are using these are still budget low end kind of amplifiers compared to higher end. So if you've got a, a better amplifier, but you make it a little bit out of it. But uh, I did try it with the Audio Labs 8000, which ain't a, you know, a bad amplifier, uh, gives quite a bit of detail, and I didn't really notice much difference with that. So we're going to call that a pretty much level playing field if you buy a wire these or you don't buy a wire these. I mean, you may get some slightly different results with your amplifier straight receiver that's for certain i'm not saying you're not going to but uh, for what i could get out of it there's hardly any difference so but i'll continue to uh, use these by wide in the end uh, just in case that it's going to help just a little bit and the first thing you notice is the top end is a little bit on the bright side uh, it's got that little bit of brightness sheen to it uh, but the top end sounded quite nice quite you know, a reasonable amount of detail in the top end sounded quite nice uh, it wasn't harsh or anything like that, that's for certain, but it just seemed a little bit bright and that, like I say, a little bit of a sheen to it. And that kind of crept into the mid range as well a little bit, but uh, it didn't really spoil it too much at all. Uh, the vocals sounded quite nice, man and female, the trumpet, the sax, the piano, they all sounded quite nice. When we crept down to the bottom end, this is what kind of spoiled the speaker a bit here with the sanding. Uh, it, had, it had no real definition to it, it was very one noted really, and, and the one notes were. Um, if, if I can kind of like um, put it on a grayscale and you've got well, maybe 256 segments of grayscale and it, you know, as, as a note, a bass note being played, you should hear that kind of like going along the grayscale kind of thing. It was jumping, you know, it was just, it was, it was tight. It was it, not tight, it was, but it, it has a tightness to the bass, it's got some tightness to it, but um, it was cramped, it was strangled kind of thing. So rather than jumping up one at a time, going through you know, like that, it was kind of jumping 10 segments at a time. So you're not getting the texture, it's getting cramped, it's getting choked kind of thing. So that wasn't great. So I thought, let's get rid of that sand. So I'm gonna show you a little video of me emptying out and seeing how much sand's actually in these speakers. I'm gonna show you a picture of how much sand I collected, but just, just show you me a video of actually uh, taking the sand out of these. I'm not too worried too much about damaging the speaker to be honest with you. I'm just going to try and actually happens. Maybe I get down in the bottom of my hand. We can see some sand coming out already. So here we go. Now, the idea is it's going to land in this box. So this could be a slow process. But hopefully you can see the sand coming through there. I don't want to get too much on the floor if I can help it. So um, it's not going all according to plan completely. Some of it's going in here. But some of it's managing to go on the floor as well. But we're, we're collecting a bit of that coming out for a bit later on with some sand castles, maybe. So I'm try and speed the process up a bit. If I suddenly disappear under a load of sand, it's obviously more than I thought in there. But anyway, we're going to let that process go. Ah, this is just going to say let it go. It seems to have slowed down a bit. Here we go. Is it speeding up a bit? Oh, that bung's in quite tight. I've got an idea. As soon as I get it set up, it's going to start gushing out. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? So we're getting some... I'm not too sure how much sand's in here. There we go. Quite a bit of sand. So that's going to come in handy later on in the garden. So let's put it all out. Right, so I removed all the sand and I managed to spike myself uh, twice uh, lifting these speakers as they kind of moving around the sand and I kind of lost grip a couple of times and one of the spikes went in quite hard and also caught my arm as well. So um, yeah, kind of put me out of action for a day or two to be honest with you because I've been screwing a few things around the house and that and uh, couldn't put too much pressure against it. So I weren't expecting that. So be a bit careful. Uh, maybe take the spikes off if you're going to start filling or unfilling sand out of speakers. So anyway, I took all the sand out, and there's a picture there of the sand in the little tray there, and uh, approximately five kilos. It was just slightly above, I think it was about 5.6 or 5.4, I can't remember exactly. It was around about there, six or four. I forgot now which one it is at the two. So we'll, we'll call it just over five kilos of sand in each speaker. I don't know if that's the recommending amount or not. It's a picture here. Uh, the back of uh, a speaker here that uh, someone's posted up and you can see it says fill the speaker with sand to enhance that base. So now I'm going to try it without the sand and see what I thought that made any difference, you know, what kind of difference that's going to make. Well for me, removing the sand was better. It may not be for you, it may be your house set up, it may be your living room set up, it may just be, you know, amplifier etc. But uh, for me, with all the amps I use and receivers, it was better with the sand removed. 
Uh, it just added that, if we go back to that grayscale and that texture kind of thing in the base, it still wasn't right, but it helped. Um, it, it wasn't jumping 10 at a time, it kind of halved it kind of thing. It was jumping about five at a time, shall we say. So um, the, the, the texture's not quite right, and that, that gradient is qu not quite right in the base, the definition of that base, the detail in that base isn't right. It keeps it, qu it, keeps it choked a bit, strangled uh, within the unit, I should imagine, within that cabinet, it's getting strangled in there and it's not being allowed to be free. So when you're hitting the drum and it's going boom, boom like that, it's, it's kind of jumping, boom. Uh, it's kind of like, you're not getting the, not getting the, the air, you know, not getting the, um, the space around it, the airiness, you're not getting the detail out of it. So uh, that, that, that does let this speaker down, I think. I mean, it's still all right, you're gonna get the track, boom, 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 and all that. You're gonna get all that kind of thing, but it's just cutting it short. It's not giving you, uh, the extra you should be getting, shall we say. So um, yeah, it kind of just jumps along. It's not giving a nice defined, kind of like smooth passage. It's, it's quite rough in places, the bass. So um, that's what lets this speaker down. And also I think uh, being a bit bright top end. I mean, that the image in that, the imaging was quite nice. The instrument placement was okay. There's nothing wrong with that at all. The sound went beyond the speakers. It lacked the airiness a little bit. It had, a, it had some 3D to it, you know, it had some dimension to it, just lacked a bit of airiness to it. It lacks a little bit of space around uh, different instruments and that, more so with the bottom end. The top end, you know, towards the top end, the higher uh, instruments and that, did seem to have a reasonable amount of space considering, but uh, as it come down, uh, that base choking it up was cramping it up and wasn't giving it the space and freedom uh, that it wanted kind of thing. So all in all, they're not too bad. Now I did try these, like I say, with quite a few different amplifiers and whatever, and if you've got a bright amplifier, stay well clear of these, I think, because they're going to be too bright for you and they're going to stand a bit shallow. Um, my kind of neutral sounding amplifiers, it, it, they didn't sound too bad, you know what I mean? They weren't too bad at all. But as soon as I started adding a bit of warmth to the, you know, it's got some amplifiers, for instance, the uh, Pioneer SX440, uh, is it? My NAD amplifier down there. I kind of added that warmth and richness to it, and that helped these speakers a lot. It tamed down that shine, that top end shine it a little bit more body, a little bit more richness and helped out, but it still didn't obviously cure where the bass didn't have the kind of texture and uh, that kind of grayscale, as I call it, as I kind of mentioned in this video, trying to give you another example, uh, didn't put that right, you know, still jumping, it weren't giving the, the one the increments of one, it was giving more increments of five kind of thing, but it still was better than with the sand in. So for me, the sand out was the better option, like I say, worth experimenting maybe, not too sure exactly what you're supposed to put in this, what the given amount is, what the given weight of sand is. This bloke used fine, kind of like sharp sand, five, just over five kilos in each. Maybe a bit of experimenting, you may get different sounds, obviously. So that's it, they're not too bad. If you're gonna pay 30 to 50 pound, they're probably gonna be all right if you're looking for a pair of floor standards, but if you've got a neutral to bright amp, you may just wanna be a bit careful. If you've got a warmer sanding amp, then these are probably gonna be okay. Just gonna miss missing that bottom definition of the bass frequencies. That's it. I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.